Hi everyone, welcome back to Gold Fries, and in this video, we'll be looking at the Intel Core i5-13600K, which is my favorite processor for 2022. But this is not my usual review. However, this is a, a, a look into this CPU out of my curiosity. I wonder how it performs when handicapped, at least it feels like a handicap, using a B660 chipset motherboard with a DDR4 3600MHz memory and have it pit against the 7700X from AMD, the Ryzen 7 that is, and then that CPU is using a DDR5 memory at 6000MHz. But why the 7700X? Well, that's the, that's the AM5 CPU that I have that's closest to the 13600K over here in terms of price and core counts. So let's begin with the comparison. The 13600K here has 6 cores, P cores that is, it has 12 threads for the P cores and it has 8 E cores with 8 threads, 1 thread for each E core. 7700X however has 8 cores, 16 threads. Pricing wise, the 13600K is at RM1499, while the 7700X is at RM1899. For those of you wanting the numbers in US dollars, you just have to divide it by 4. This is out of speed, however, if you want it by accuracy, go with the rate of 4.5. So out of the box, the CPU itself, there's RM400 price gap, which is about US 80, 90. As for the motherboard, I'll be using a B660 motherboard. The B660 chipset motherboard, a reasonably good one. RM 500 to 600 range, while the affordable B5, B650 motherboard for the AMD M5 is about RM 850, so we'll give it a difference of say at least RM 200. And then when it comes to the memory, whether you're selling off your DDR4 to get DDR5 or just getting DDR5 straight and compare it to a DDR4, the price gap is still about RM 200. So the overall difference comes to about RM 800-ish, which is US dollars, easily 180, 200, and that's a lot of money, money where you can channel into a better cooler, better storage, better power supply, better case, and many other things. Even when we compare this, that 800 RM difference compared to the total cost of the estimated overall, I'm using 1005 for the, I'm just rounding the figures, 1005 for the Intel CPU, 1009 for this AMD CPU and then 600 for the Intel motherboard, 800 for the AMD motherboard, 250 for the DDR4, uh, 450 for the DDR5. You total, total up the figure, that gap, that gap is a 34, it's around 34% increase of cost from this DDR4 setup of using the Intel CPU to the AMD AM5 setup using DDR5. Alternatively, you can look at this additional cost as a future proofing tax. Bear in mind that in this video, we are just looking at pushing frame rates with AAA titles using the AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT running at 1440p at maximum graphics settings. After all, this is a realistic setup. There's no reason for me to set at 1080p, run it at medium to low settings just to show which CPU is better. It's better we're looking at the realistic setup. Even if I were to use a 1490, it doesn't make sense for anyone using a 1490 to show you the benchmark at 1080p, medium or low settings. It's kind of like, if you don't understand how the, the results are, you might be thinking, wow, so huge a difference. But in reality, what I'm going to show you is what people actually use and that's the actual performance you get. And just to add, if you add multi-core productivity workload, the favor goes really pretty much all the way to the Intel setup simply because 6 cores, 12 threads, more like 6 P cores, 8 E cores and 20 threads. That's a lot more performance compared to the 7700X with 8 cores, 16 threads. In the configurations I'm using for this video, for the Intel setup, I'm using the ASRock B660M PG Riptide with the DDR4 3600MHz memory. And then 
for the AMD setup, I'm using the 7700X on the AMD B650 Pro RS with a DDR5 memory kit from PNY and it has XMP and Expo of which I of course will be loading Expo and it's a 6000MHz CL40 kit. So let's start with the results. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the results are near identical. In the 5, the gap widens but just a little bit with the AMD game title favoring the AMD setup. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the results are identical. Up next is Far Cry 6 where the game favors Intel this time with a small gap. After that, we have Ghost Recon Breakpoint which favors the AMD system by quite a huge margin. And next up, in The Division 2, we see the results are identical. And lastly, in Watch Dogs Legion, the AMD system takes a slight lead. With that, we can conclude that their performance is identical. If I were to compute the performance gains from these, this AMD AM5 setup's lead, it's leading by just 1.5%, which is very little considering you are paying about RM800 extra for it. And the Intel system is actually easier to jump into, especially if you're looking for a used DDR4 kit. Or say you already have a reasonable set of DDR4 kit and you want to use on the Intel system. Yeah, it works right out of the box. But the AMD AM5 system is not without merits. You can get an affordable motherboard and it can be used with even the higher end processor. Even the highest end processor we have right now, like the 17950X. I actually use it, I actually reviewed one, which is also from Astro, the B650 and PG Reply. Superb stuff, affordable motherboard, and you know that the AM5 system is supposed to be lasting for at least five years, that is AMD support before it goes uh, EOL, end of line. And even after that period, you could actually get the highest end CPU, hopefully, and still use it for maybe a year or two or more to come, depending on your need. So the price of that AM5 system is not without um, benefits. Either way, you will not lose out regardless of which path you choose. However, before you head out to buy the 13600K or the 7700X, hold on a bit. I have recently just bought a 7600 and I actually like it a lot and there will be a different comparison. Of course, um, the 7600X is nice, I can tell you that. And for the Intel camp, the 13600 might kick this K model, might cost a lot, but there's this 13500 which is very good too. And with that, that's all for this one. Great stuff from Intel, this 13600K using a supposedly older system with DDR4 and all that and it is such a... It put up such a good fight with a higher end, um, or my, more like higher price system. And then when you throw in productivity workload, of course, I'm not going to show it here. You can see, look at it in other reviews. The Intel one will really f flatten the 7700X when it comes to multi core workload. So, yeah, overall, I hope this video has been educational for you. That's all for this one. Do subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And stay curious. Bye-bye.